Okay, we're down here on the Bow River today. It's a cloudy day, August 18th, and we've had a, just six weeks of non-stop weather changing. Mm -hmm. Conditions changing, but one thing's been consistent, and that is really good fishing on Bow River this year for not a ton of fish, but good numbers of really solid fish. And because of the changing and the weather and the conditions and the flows and the visibility, streamers have been really good this year from what you're saying. Overall, they've been our number one technique, basically. And really, um, there's a, a series of different ways you can set up your streamer fishing, but you like the sink tip with streamers. Personally, yes. Uh, some of our guys prefer a floating line with simply weighted flies and a leader, but this particular setup is an integrated sink tip where the actual fly line is the sink tip. The, there are two ways to have the sink tip. One is a loop-on poly leader, which you can get in a 10 foot or a 15 foot length, or outright if you're gonna do a lot of streamer fishing, it is better for the casting side of things to buy a proper sink tip line. And that could be 10 foot sink tip, 15 foot sink tip, 18, whatever your preference is. There's all kinds of options. And what do you, what do you got set up here today? So this particular one is a 15 foot type six uh, sink tip. So is, is that, that about 250 is. grains? Is that? Uh, kind of, no, 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 not no, not not, that definitely not. So, okay. uh, you can get those ones, you start getting into like the 18 to 24 foot sink tips when you get into that green weight stuff. Yep. So this is just simply a type six, 15 foot, six weight, Sink tip, six weeks. Generally with these sink tips, we've got a loop to loop situation here. You don't need anything fancy. This is just straight up. This particular tippet is 15 pound. You can use whatever depending on the conditions, but we usually use pretty strong stuff here uh, so that if you do catch the bottom or the weeds or the rock or a tree or whatever, you have at least a chance of rescuing your fly. Uh, so this is generally a fairly short piece that's maybe two to three feet maximum. We do change this length here depending on what we're doing. So this length will change. And then we get to the fly and again tied with the loop knot and very simply tied to the back of the hook with the clinch knot. This length again changes a little bit on what you're doing. Uh, this particular one again is about two feet back to the leech pattern. And this length here will vary substantially depending on your personal preferences and fishing conditions. And again, you're using reasonably strong. So if you got like 15 pound here, we might use 12 or 10 pound here. Again, a little bit depending on the size of this fly. So that's sort of the basic setup, and then you can just change the flies, whatever you need to do. Obviously, you've been in a, on the bow a lot of years, yep. and I, I, something tells me you've streamer fished before. It's one of my favorite ways to fish, for sure. Okay. Now, for for people out there, I mean, we were just having an off-camera discussion, and it's not like these flies are secret. Uh, no. Uh, it, the fly itself I don't really think matters that much as long as there is some contrast between the flies. So usually we will fish a lighter colored fly which is in the whites or the tan color so something that is fairly bright that the fish can see generally followed up by a darker fly which often is a leech type pattern. And that's a little bit smaller. It's usually a little bit smaller, the, the back fly with the way that it's set up. Okay, now with that, I see you've got a, a non-slip loop knot to the head of, of right. that. Now, why, why are you using a non-slip loop knot? Well, we use the loop knot here because it just simply allows the fly to swim properly. Anytime you put weight at the head of the fly, whether it's a cone head or dumbbell eyes like a clouser minnow, it allows the fly to dive down when you pause your strip more freely. And so therefore, the fly can keep moving even though you're not stripping. Yeah, that way it'll roll in the current and it does, roll it over just rocks. Lifts. And it it just, looks alive. Okay. It, it allows the fly to look alive. And then the same thing with the back end of the fly, it's tied with a loop knot for exactly the same reason. It allows the fly to swim. So it's, it's just a perfection loop like you do at the top of your leader but got to tie it a little different with the fly being there. So you do your regular overhand knot, take your fly, 
put it through the eye, big eye always helps. You go back up through the knot, around the back, and then you've got to go underneath these two. So I cross them, and then underneath and up through that circle. And that's immediately in so front of the eye of the hook at yeah, that point, eh? Well, and you can, right now, I can adjust that knot loop to where I want it before I tighten it up. And then I just, I want a little loop on there, so I'll slide it down and then tighten up. So it's a perfection loop. It's just, it's nice because it's really small. It's not bulky at all. And it takes a little practice to tie it, but once you get it, it's uh, just as strong as the knot on the other end, so. And I'm gonna tie it my way, the, the tying a, a trailer streamer on. I'm just gonna put that hook in my mouth. No, I'm not, because I gotta talk. And I'm gonna just gonna take the tippet that goes to my second streamer, make a little loop, and go one, two, three, four, five. And then I got that tag in, in your mouth, put it through the loop, hold it there. I bring back my streamer that's now on my shirt, put it on the hook, come down, and it's on. And there's your pre-tied clinch knot. That's method number one. Now we're gonna clip that off and Dave Blair is gonna do it. Okay, so this is the exact same knot, just done the way I've always done it. So you come up with your own personal preference. You hook it onto the fly, pinch it, wrap it around your five or six times, and tighten it up. So it's exactly the same knot that Dave did. Three, four, five, six, and tag in back through the loop and tighten her up. And it's the exact same knot, just done a different way. Yeah. And the nice thing about fly fishing is that there's more than one way to skin a cat. You can do it a bunch of different ways. So mine's just a turtle knot, so I just do a slip knot. Within a slip knot, take it over the back of the hook, tighten it up. Flip it off, it's nice and fast. It's all about speed. Dead guys anyway. <laughs> so three guys. We've been fly fishing a long time and it's kind of like being married. Every little step in fly fishing is exactly like being married. And, and I don't know how long you guys have been married, but I've been married, been married a while and you end up at the same place, but you end up doing things different. so differently. A little bit differently. And, and uh, you've probably been told by your wife there's no right answer. I, I know I have been once or twice. Never. No. <laughs> Well, I'm never right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but even something simple as a, a knot to tie on your your trailing streamer. Three guys, three different ways. And there's probably a million other ways to. And there's yeah. There's yeah, we're not right. Uh, yeah. None of us are saying that this is the right way. And so. the loop, I do my loops different too. Yeah. So it's just whatever and, whatever works for you. And because I use big heavy streamers, I don't use the slip knot. I just go right because I'm so heavy, and away we go. Right. So.